Well, good morning, everybody. I welcome you again to the Beacon House of Prayer for this morning's prayer intercession. My name is Peter Clayton. Today's agenda is now available for viewing or downloading from this group page, and it's labeled prayer leading underscore 200717, or it's on my post a, a little earlier this morning. Today, I want to pray about future COVID-19 related situations, the future ones. And out of that, I'll bring four subjects for prayer as I often do. You can, of course, pray by adding a comment uh, to this post, but I will be allowing time during the presentation for you to pray in your own situations. I'm going to read a couple of verses and a bit of an explanation and then lead us into the prayer session for this morning. The first verse I would like to present is Philippians 4, verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. That's the NEV version, NIV version. The message version, don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. And the other verse I'd like to do it bring is from Isaiah 41, verse 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Again, that's the NIV version. The message version is, don't panic, I'm with you. There's no need to fear, for I'm your God. I'll give you strength. I'll help you. I'll hold you steady. Keep a firm grip on you. These, these, the sense of these two verses is that no matter what situation we're in, and whether that situation is now or in the future, God is always saying to us, come to him. He has the answers. He has the help. He will promise to help you. And so we can pray in confidence that whatever we pray, A, God is going to hear, and B, he's going to act. So let me explain where I'm, I'm coming from for today. This week, I have felt led by the Holy Spirit to begin to pray forward for the COVID-19 related situations. In the past recent weeks, the prayer for COVID has been for current situations and quite rightly so. But now I feel prompted by the Holy Spirit to begin to pray for situations that are coming in the future. I have noted that the reporting about the COVID crisis is beginning to include more and more situations that are still yet future. And I sense the Holy Spirit to prompt me to start praying in that direction. I believe that our intercessory prayers is all about partnership with the Lord. He wants us to partner with him in this fight of what is going on right now and is yet to come. Whilst our prayers have been directed towards the current issues, and we've seen many answers to those prayers. He now wants us to direct our prayers towards future issues and see many answers before those projected incidents occur or even change what the incident is, is forecasting. So today, I have picked four items that are being written about on the BBC News web pages. 
that describe forthcoming issues. And so let us pray into those things to see things change, maybe not happen, but see what God wants to do and in directing our prayers. My first suggestion is to pray into this particular short article. The title is three billion pounds for NHS to prepare for possible second wave. My heart in this is to pray about that second wave. Yes, the NHS is going to be given all this money and that's great. The government are looking forward. But also that takes a lot of organisation within the NHS. The big organisation that happened for the first wave and of course that um, left out all the non uh, cases, the, you know, the cardiac stuff and cancer and all those stuff and those have had to be in a sense put on the back burner for a while. But I know that the hospitals are beginning to change back because of the incidences of COVID are now fully reduced. But if it, the second wave comes again, there's the reorganization all over again. But the article says about the COVID second wave itself. It says, a warning is out, a second wave this winter could see 120,000 deaths in UK hospitals. That is a massive number. So I want to pray about that. So I'm going to pray and then I'm going to be silent for a few moments to allow you to pray also where you are right now. Father, I just thank you for this advance warning, as you might say that there potentially is a second wave coming of the COVID-19 deaths. It's been seen in other parts of the world. And although the current restrictions are in place to hopefully prevent that, but it's still anticipated. But Father, I'm praying in faith that the second wave will be nothing like what is being predicted. That you, Father, by your Spirit, will be doing all kinds of things in the background to, to reduce the numbers seriously. To reduce the numbers in a huge way. That many people, the many people won't be affected like is anticipated. And we, I ask this, Lord, in your name, your mighty name, of the God who wants to help and partner with us in Jesus' name. And now you pray your heart for this situation. And now I'd like to pray for another situation potentially coming up in the future. The headline is 227,000 tenants at risk of eviction. Research by Shelter shows that 220,000 private renters in England have fallen behind with their rent. 
often as a result of job losses during the lockdown. A March, a March moratorium by the government on eviction cases stopped people becoming homeless during the crisis. But this ends on the 24th of August and landlords can seek possession of properties in the courts. Under the current system, anyone accruing rent arrears of eight weeks or more can be automatically evicted, in addition to the risk being subjected to Section 21 no-fault eviction. In other words, landlords can evict tenants at short notice without a special reason. And the point is, on the one hand, the, the tenants have all, are already under this pressure from the landlords. Landlords are already taking action. But at the moment, because of the moratorium, they're frustrated and from doing that. But the next thing is, after the 24th of August, they can evict their tenants straight away, no matter what the situation. Shelter are offering or suggesting a, um, a, a, a solution to this, and that the government change the law slightly so that judges can have discretion in these matters and not permit eviction. In financial crises. Now the Parliament has only a short number of days in which it can pass this before it goes into recess for the lung, for the for the uh, for the summer. So I want to pray along those lines. When it comes your turn, you pray for these um, private ten these tenants in what is on your heart for God. Father, I pray for this situation with these tenants who are have got arrears through no faults of their own because of the lockdown, because they've been out of jobs, because people have been being made redundant already. And Father, in some situations, the courts have no authority to stop it. Father, I pray that in the few short days we have this week, and now in next week, Lord, to, for, the, for the government to pass a law or change the law such that judges can have discretion, I'm asking, Father, that you bring that about. But I also ask, Father, that you give the landlords more compassion. No, it's not every landlord that's doing this, but many are, and that means two, potentially 227 thousand tenants will be out of home. So Father, in your compassion, will you do something about it? Will you enable the law to be changed and give judge of discretion? Will you give more compassion or or direct or whatever you want to do it? See that the landlords have more compassion and give the tenants chances to get employment and to be able to pay the awards. In the name of Jesus, I ask. Amen. And now you pray what puts on God, God puts on your heart for this situation. And now I'd like to pray for a worldwide dynamic 
for the uh, of this COVID-19 um, virus. In that, there are many poor nations who have not even got the financial resources to do what we're doing, even in our country. The headline is UN makes a record 10.3 billion dollars appeal for the pandemic fight. The United Nations is making an appeal for 10.3 million dollars, which is 8.2 million pounds, to help fight the coronavirus pandemic, its largest ever fundraising call. The United Nations says up to 265 million people could face starvation by the end of the year because of the impact of COVID-19. The money will be used for low income and fragile countries. The UN warned that failure to act could undo decades of development. The coronavirus pandemic is having a huge impact on the world's poorest. As we all know when we've read the Bible many times, how much the poor are on God's hand are, and how much he asks us, his people, to look after the poor. And so I'm going to pray in this situation. Father, I pray that in response to the United Nations appeal for the money, the Father, that that money comes in very, very quickly so that the poor countries who haven't got those kind of resources can actually be resourced and be helped. Father, the main issue appears to be lack of food, starvation. No, If they're not having work, they're not earning money. But even so, the country itself can't provide those food resources. Lord, have, have your way. Make your appeal out to the, your people to, to help with this appeal so that the people who are right now, because of a lack of money, cannot help themselves, can be helped by the United Nations Fund. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now you pray your heart out for these poor people. And finally, this morning, I would like to pray about a vi vaccine for this coronavirus. When will we have one is the question. Research is happening all over the world at breakneck speed. About 200 groups are working on vaccines and 18 of them are now being tested on people in clinical trials. The first human trial data appears positive, showing the first eight patients all produce antibodies that could neutralize the virus. However, no one knows how effective any of these vaccines will be. A vaccine normally takes years, if not decades, to develop prove and know it's going to be satisfactory. But researchers hope to achieve the same amount of work in only a few months. Most 
experts think a vaccine is likely to become available by about mid next year, 2021. About 12 to 18 months after the new virus first emerged. That would be a huge scientific feat. And at this stage, there are no guarantees that it will work. So we've got lots of things to pray for. So there's no guarantees. Let's pray for a guarantee. Let's pray for an even speedier response. Let's pray that all this work that's going to be, that's being put into it and can be successful. One point to note is this, which makes this COVID infection unique, is that in ever there are four other coronavirus uh, viruses that have been around for quite some time, but as yet none of them have got a, a vaccine to combat them. So let us pray in this situation and see God do something about it. Father, I just thank you that you've called us to pray into the future. I thank you, Father, for all these different groups, 200 of them or so, who are earnestly trying to develop a vaccine as quickly as possible, though normally it takes years often to do, do, it, do so. Father, will you, by your Spirit, will you direct these groups, Lord, to come through to uh, have been able to design a vaccine that will work, that will work, and will work in lots of different circumstances and lots of different ethnic groups. And I know that sometimes vac vaccines have to be designed, especially for, especially for particular ethnic groupings or even particular parts of the world because of the geographic conditions. Lord, will you enable this vaccine to be developed quickly and effectively and be a, a champion of what can be done through resort, the human resources but under your direction. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now you pray what God wants you to pray for this situation. Well, thank you people for joining this live video or joining this video recording uh, at a later time. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all your prayers. Thank you for joining in. But before we go, let us say, let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Whatever version is on your heart, you pray that version. It doesn't matter what. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thank you again for joining me. Goodbye until next time.